On this week's edition of Oswego Speedway Shop Talk, we venture to the Oswego, New York shop of Double Deuce Racing, where Pat Lavery and team are preparing for another year at the Big O. And we started our conversation this week with Pat on exactly how he got into racing at Oswego Speedway. When I was younger, came here as a kid, you know, watched Jimmy Champagne and Kenny Andrews, and, you know, all them guys, and loved it from, I was a, from when I was a little guy, so always wanted to be involved in it. And uh, got a chance to work with Pat Strong back when uh, Gary Martin was driving for him. So we worked with him for three, four years, and, and Gary decided that he didn't really want to do it that much anymore. Got talking with Pat Strong and <clears throat> said, hey Pat, he says, Gary's not even here. The car's sitting in the garage. Why don't you let me take it up and take it out for a little drive? I have some fun. He says, I'll pay for the gas. And well, that took a little bit of talking, probably about half a year. And finally said, well, if you want to take it out, you can take it out. Now, once you sit behind one of these things, it, you get the fever and that's pretty much how it started. Unlike several of the younger drivers of today, Lavery had never driven any type of race car in his entire career. But once behind the wheel of a super modified, he was hooked. There's nothing like a rush to drive one of these things. You get behind one of these things and just the, the, all the power is just, uh, it's hard to explain. I didn't have a chance to grow up driving anything else. Uh, a lot of these kids come up through quarter midgets and what have you. And, you know, they got a little bit of feel for a car. I jumped in this thing green, pretty much. So I had no idea what I was getting into, but it would, you know, it's, the rush was there and had to, had to have it, you know, once, once I got it, I had to have it. As many have learned, going out on track and driving a super modified is one thing, but being able to master your craft and be competitive is totally different. Well, it was, it was quite a while, actually. There's a, there's a huge learning curve. Um, when I first got into it, uh, Gary Martin helped me a lot, and he he told me right up front. He goes, "I'm telling you, driving a super modified, there's an it's like an apprenticeship." He says about a four year apprenticeship, and he was right. Uh, four years, it was probably a little longer than that for me. Um, I still feel every time I go out there, I learn something. I feel I I find a little bit more about the car, and and I still feel as though I'm getting better. So and. I feel now that we're as competitive as just about anybody else out there. While serving his super modified apprenticeship with Strong Racing, Lavery quickly became known as one of the most consistent drivers on the circuit, and before long, was a regular contender for top five positions. That was one thing we wanted to do, is roll a car into the garage at the end of the night. And we tried to do that every, every week. But uh, I gotta say that, <clears throat> really thank them guys for giving me that opportunity to drive their car and uh, thank them a lot for that. But it got to a point where Pat talked about, you know, maybe cutting back, not racing all the time. He was kind of slowing down and I was picking up. And it, I mean, we parted in good terms, but it was just one of those, it was a thing that had to be done, I guess. With Lavery's driving abilities continuing to climb, a door soon opened at Double Deuce Racing. Well, that was right around the same time, and Bob had a second car that was only running part-time. And I struck up a conversation with him one night, and he said, well, that's not out of the question, he says. <laughs> and the rest is pretty much history there. One of the biggest adjustments for Lavery switching from strong racing to double deuce racing was the introduction of a Hawk Jr. Super Modified. There was a, there was a huge difference. The, the Hawk cars are just, it took a little bit of, of getting used to, it really did. But once you get used to them being a little bit tighter and you know, you're not, not having that mobility in the car, you're strapped in pretty tight in there and not moving. So. It's a little claustrophobic to start with, but once you get used to that and, and how the car handled it, it there's a, a definitely a noticeable driving difference in the cars. 
and as the adjustment period wore off, Lavery continued to climb, becoming a weekly contender for wins, a weekly contender for track championships. But somehow, in some way, a first feature victory continued to be out of his grasp. Maybe a little bit of frustration, but it was, it's, it was still a lot of fun to be competitive and be up front and, and know that you got that opportunity to win at any time. And we did feel that way. We felt any, any time we went to the track, we had an opportunity to win. And that's all we're looking for. Um, it, it did seem like whatever it took to get in my way from, from a win, like a phone block or maybe the lights going out or whatever it took, it seemed like it was, you know, it would bite me. But obviously we, we've jumped that hurdle and that monkey's off my back, I hope. In June of last year, that monkey was officially ripped from Lavery's back as he joined an elite list of Novella Super Modified winners in Oswego Speedway, outdueling Cody Graham in one of the best main events of the 2013 season. Yeah, that was that was a great race. That, this car, Eric and Dave, I also prepared this car for me. Then, well, they do it every week, and they do a great job every week. I got an awesome car every week. I know what I got when I go to the track. They put a car under me that night that I pretty much could do with it, uh, whatever I wanted with it. And I had a feeling that I was gonna win that race when I started. It was just a matter of how I was gonna do it. And uh, luckily, uh, things worked out for me and I you know, got Cody in a situation and got, him, got by him, so. Unfortunately for Lavery, however, he was quickly thrown back to reality later on that evening. That car, the second race was as good, if not better, than the first race. And we're going to the front. I had, a, I had good feelings and of course you know how that goes. I get, you get a great car, you want to get there, you know you can get there. And maybe I jumped in a little too, too early and got in a bad situation. Got myself in a situation that shouldn't have done. but. That's racing, I guess. Despite picking up his first career main event win in 2013, last season didn't quite live up to the expectations of a 2012 campaign that saw Lavery duel Otto Sitterly for the Speedway Championship right down to the bitter end. Yeah, it was a little bit of a letdown because of the, the bad luck that we had at the beginning of the season. Finishing bad the first race, just kind of missed it right off the, the bat. And then uh, we had the motor troubles. And we wrecked out, and I think the first five races, we finished two. And we normally, you know, we finished quite a lot of races. So we got ourselves in a position where the points were out of the, out of the picture, and we just concentrated on making the car better. And in all, through the, through the whole season, we progressed. I think every week we got better, we got better. By the end of the year, I think we had one of the best cars out there, and I hope that we can go right back this year with that same car. And those hopes have Lavery and team looking towards the top in 2014. If I wasn't thinking about the championship, then there's something wrong with me. I'd like to, I like to win the first race, and then the second race, and every race after that. So, like everybody else, they want to win, and that's what we're there for. We don't, we're, we're looking to win. We try not to worry about what's going on with everybody else on the track. We try to concentrate on what we have to do to make our car as good as we can get it. And we'll go with that. And we, we like I say, I feel that this car is as good a car as any one of the new ones. I really do. I feel it's just as competitive as any other car out there. With the introduction of several new race cars and many returning veterans, Lavery realizes that this may be the toughest season yet to pull into victory lane and battle for top five finishes. It's gonna to be tough. It's gonna to be very tough. Um, all the new Hawk cars, you know, everybody knows how fast them are. And it's, it's not gonna be long before there's two or three or four of them starting up front. And it's gonna to be tough. I mean, you're going to have to work hard to get a top five this year. I believe it's going to be very tough. With the competition at an all-time high, Lavery can at least be satisfied knowing that he's got speed on his side, being the fastest man at Oswego the last two seasons. Uh, I don't know, to tell you the truth. It, <clears throat> it goes off the start. It, it goes. Uh, I don't know if it's me or if it's the, 
Eric and Dave setting the car up or what, but it's fast off the get-go. A many-year veteran now of Super Modified Racing at Oswego Speedway, Lavery says that as long as the sport is still fun and they can compete for wins, he and Double Deuce Racing plan on continuing to come through the steel gates for some time to come. Not too much longer. It's tough chasing these kids around the track, you know. Um, Gozik's still here, so I gotta be here. <laughs> if he would pull the pin, it'd make it a lot easier on me. But as a whole, it's, it's gonna be a team thing. Um, Billy and Bob have talked about getting out sometime soon, you know. When, when that time comes, we'll know it. Right now, we're, we're, we're still very competitive. We, like I say, we feel that we can win on any given night, and it's still fun, so that's what it's all about. As long as we're having fun, we'll probably still be here. Really, really like to thank <clears throat> Bob Hofer, Billy and Linda Samuels. Could not be in a better place for me, and when they kick me out, I'll be done racing, but this is the, this is the this is where I want to be, right here, racing for these guys. And I, I also want to thank my uh, fiance, Kelly, for putting up with me and not being home when I'm being in the garage all the time. And like every team at Oswego Speedway, Double Deuce Racing and Pat Lavery have a host of supporters in helping them get through the season, including Vashaw's Collision. All my sponsors have been great to me, Lighthouse Lanes especially, uh, <clears throat> Compass, Credit Union has been great. Performance Harley Davidson, Ari Davidson's on. Uh, we got a couple of new sponsors coming on board. We're not really sure exactly what's going on with them, but we'll appreciate all their help too. Uh, who else have I got here? <laughs> Bob's trying to help me out here. <laughs> How about the Big Dipper? Chris Nelson Insurance, the comic shop. Danny Bush helps us out. I'm not so good at this part of it. 